There may be some truth to that too. Well, I don't just talk about the three little pigs. I'm also going to preach it. You know, I wanted to acknowledge really how far you've come. The truth is, we have spent a great deal of time. These guys have spent a great deal of, a deal of time in that kind of literature. The kind of literature that would expand their vocabulary, that would enrich their minds, that would enable them to challenge themselves, and ultimately what they will do is challenge the world around them. They are equipped, and they have progressed so far. And I want to encourage and challenge you through this story, now that you've come to this place in your life, this one thing, build well. You now are of age both entitled and inspired to seek your fortune. The parenting, the education, the experiences, the faith that you have received to this point, all of these things have laid a foundation upon which that you will now build the rest of your life. And it has all been so that you will now build well. So build well. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it means don't build with straw. The other day I was having coffee with Russell Hill, who is sitting right over here, and he shared this quote with me. He said, our problem is that we keep forgetting what it is that we are to remember and remembering all the things that we're supposed to forget. I'm going to read that again just so you catch it. Our problem is that we keep forgetting what it is that we are to remember and remembering all the things that we are supposed to forget. Here's the thing I want you to hear. The wolfish wind, it's real. Right now you're set. Right now you're surrounded by all of these people and we're encouraging you and we're praising you. We say, oh, we love you and you're doing so great. And you have every reason to step away from here with hope and to believe in yourself. And that is exactly what you want, what we want and what you want. But times are coming when discouragement is going to blow in like a gale force wind. People are going to say and do things that are going to hurt you. They're going to disappoint you. They're going to make you feel like you can't do anything right or well. You've experienced some of this already, I'm sure. There's going to be times when you're going to try. You're going to really, really try and you're going to fail. And here's the challenge. The challenge is, as you build, will you let the stuff that is meant to blow away, blow away? There are things that you are to remember and things that you are to forget. There are things like the disappointment of others. You know, the, the Bible calls us to forgive and be able to move on in relationship. There are things that we're meant to forget. Our weaknesses and our mistakes, though we should acknowledge them and we should build upon them and we should decide, I'm going to be better next time, I'm going to do this better next time. We can't allow those things to define who we are. These are things that are straw that need to be blown away when the wind comes and we blow them away and we don't allow those things to define us. But rather, we keep the things and remember the things that we should. And these are just some examples. Well, here's a bunch of examples. These people that are here right now that have cheered you to this point are always cheering you. These are the people that love you. These are the people that believe in you. These are the people that believe that you have strengths and that you're able to do things that, that other people just cannot do. Those are the things you need to hold on to. Live into those strengths. Live into those successes and remember, you know, I, this is when I did things well. This is what I'm good at. This is what I have to give to the world. The point is that there are things to decide to remember and there are things to decide to forget. And the choices that you make comprise the fabric of the material that you use to build your life. And so you can build with straw and you can be bitter and cynical and beaten and depressed and live in darkness every day. Or you can let go what the wind should carry and cling to that which gives life. But here's the thing. No one can make that choice. No one can make that decision except you. 
And so as you look ahead and you see yourself in a moment of pain, of disappointment, of weakness, of failure, I want you to remember, I'm building well. Let the straw fly away. Let the wind take what the wind should take. And I'm going to choose to remember these things because these are the things that will make me more. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, the Bible says, think of these things. God says, this is where my peace is. Think on these things. Straw's no good. Sticks are no good either. The problem with sticks is that they give the illusion of strength, but when tested, they don't hold up. One of the greatest challenges that you face building your life is seeing evil as evil and good as good. And I will tell you, this world needs your godly discernment. The diminutive swine didn't have time to contemplate tactical particularities or detailed strategical conversations. But if you're going to build well, you don't have time not to. To build with sticks is to face each day by your own wit, by your own whiskered jowl. It is either intentionally or unintentionally. Either it's, it may be by neglect, but you can find yourself making your way through your days and through your circumstances without preparation for the challenges that you're actually dealing with. You see, you can't see evil until you know good. You can't hear lies if you haven't spent time listening to truth. Build well means building your days on the truths of God. And I'm going to tell you, letting others tell you what God's word says is not enough. You have to wrestle with it. You have to test it. You have to see with your own eyes that God's word will stand and will stand every time. You have to write it on your heart. You have to keep it on the forefront of your mind. Facing your days any other way is building your life with sticks that have the illusion of strength, but really it's relying on your own reason. And when you find yourself pressing against the relentless and the torrential onslaught of the winds and the whims of the world that are telling you things like gender is a choice and marriage is just a social construct or nothing matters more than you, without a firm knowledge of the truth of God's word, you're going to be tossed back and forth with every wave of teaching. What I'm telling you is this. Don't build on you. Build on something bigger than you. Build your life on God's word, trusting it completely, trusting it fully, trusting that what he declares evil is evil. And what he declares good is good. And the Bible says, that the Lord will know that you are his because every day you will confess him as Lord and you're able and you're committed to turning from wickedness and you'll be, you'll be that one in whatever the, whenever the circumstance demands that you'll, you'll be the one that says, I urge we run! I won't do the whole wee, wee, wee thing again. That's my gift to you, Emma. Straw and sticks won't do it. To build, you need bricks. Remembering what's worth remembering, forgetting what's supposed to be forgotten, being intentional about that, that's a brick. God's word is definitely a brick. But the one thing that I, that will ensure the life that you build will endure is knowing God himself. I, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't be more proud 
than to hear my daughter, Abby, speak repeatedly of her desire to know and experience the fullness of life that Jesus Christ came to give us. If you let him, God will take you to amazing places. He will invite you into wonderful experiences and even more wonderful relationships. The Bible says God has given us everything for our enjoyment. But I want to tell you that none of these things are fullness. Travel is not fullness. You know, you've heard it said many times, success is not fullness. Mission efforts are not fullness. Family is not fullness. All these things make life sweet, but none of them are fullness. Having the fullness of life as God intends is just one thing. It's God himself. What I want to say to you is don't let anything distract you from God. He would have you build every part of your life on the strength of two unexpugnable truths. Now, I promised you a definition. I looked it up, unexpugnable. Does anybody know what that means, just kind of by a show of hands? My mom raised her hand because we looked it up earlier. <laughs> it means incapable of being subdued or overthrown. To attach some words, it means it's not going to change. It means it's eternal. It means it's uncontainable. He would want you to build your life on these two inexpugnable truths. One is this. God himself loves you. Now here's my fear. My fear is that that will sound cliche to you. But it's not meant to. The fact that God, the creator of all that you see, all that you know, all that you are, God himself loves you. And it's meant to be your identity you're meant to be able to stand in front of a group of people, whether they be friends or foe, and say, I am one who is loved by God. And it's meant to have a courageous feel. It's meant to have a defensive part. It, it, it doesn't matter what you're saying to me. It doesn't matter how you're treating me. It doesn't matter how this moment is unfolding. The truth is, I am one who is loved by God. You don't understand. That is the most powerful truth for your entire life, if you were to build on any one thing, it would be that. When I approach this stage for this moment, I think to myself every year, what, what is the last thing I want them to hear from me? This is it, I'm telling you. God loves you. And when you're in your dorm alone, or you're in your apartment or alone, or you're 10 years from now, and you're feeling like things are insurmountable and you've done the very worst thing you've ever done. I want you to hear God himself loves you. He is your identity. He is your fullness. The second inexpugnable truth that cannot be contained that is to shape every moment and every breath and everything you do is that the God who loves you loves all those other people too. Whether they're sitting here or they're out there everywhere else. God intends that his love for us would instill in us a love for him and a love for one another that would produce in us a joy and a peace about ourselves that would give us a sense of patience 
with one another and kindness and goodness and faithfulness in relationship both with him and with everybody else. That we would have the same lens that this God, this amazing God who loves me, also loves you. If you can live your life with that filter in mind, praise God and thank you for loving me. I am one who is loved by God. And so are they. It is the path of fullness to you. One other thing that Russell told me the other day was this. Unless you are full, you have nothing to give. And so I'm asking you, I'm charging you, build well. Build remembering what is to be remembered and forgetting what is to be forgotten. Build on God's truth, not your own wit and not the winds of the world. And build with the intent of knowing God himself. Because this is fullness. And here's what Paul says. No one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stone, wood, hay, straw... Their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And fire will test the quality of each person's work. And so, build well, my beloved. Build well. Let me pray for you. Father, we recognize that it is you who has brought us to this place, to this moment in our lives. You are the one who breathed life into us. You are the one who has set all things in motion and who was walking with us day by day. You are the one, Father, who is searching for us revealing yourself that we might know you. Father, I'm so proud to have spent this year with these students thinking of these very things. I pray now, Father, that you will bless them as they build upon the foundation so that they have received in their homes and through classical conversations, that you will help them, Lord, to build well, to remember that they are yours forgetting the things that you would call them to forget and to press into your truth, that they might know you truly and that they might truly make you known. Thank you for being the God that you are. May you be praised in all things. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.